Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 29th, 2021, recorded around 12, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for two tropical systems to be forming in the main development region within the next couple of days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we notice that the remnants of Tropical Storm Danny has now moved inland and is now actually sitting over parts of northern Alabama and extreme northwestern Georgia this, this afternoon. And this will continue to just kind of dissipate and die off and get caught up eventually uh, in this next frontal system that's kind of coming uh, from the Midwest United States and sweeping down. Uh, this, again, could still bring some heavy rainfall, gusty winds from time to time. No longer a tropical system. It dissipated late last night, and that is certainly a good thing. But came in really quickly here across the coast of South Carolina and now moved inland, so no real threat now uh, from that. We're also watching two other tropical systems in the Atlantic Basin for the month of June here. Invest Area 95L and newly designated Invest Area 97L, which we talked about over the past couple of days. Both of these systems have at least some shot at development, especially 97L over here. 95L will continue moving off towards kind of the west-northwest and impact the Greater Antilles by uh, within the next couple of days here. And uh, for Trinidad and Tobago, the Barbados... They'll have to monitor the progress here of Invest Area 97L as it looks like this will be the one to become a tropical depression or storm in the next couple of days. Here's a look here at 95L. Again, the formation area now 40% chance of development over the next five days. Really hasn't increased all that much. But again, this will be moving off towards the west-northwest and impact the greater Antilles over the next couple of days. And then even up towards parts of, um, you know, Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, Public Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, uh, maybe even as parts of to the Turks and Caicos Islands over here. And this will be moving off towards the west-northwest, again, bringing with it some gusty winds, heavy rainfall, some squally conditions. Development chances on this wave seem to be pretty much maxed out at about 40 to 50 percent. I don't think we'll get much higher than that unless the development uh, trends uh, sway it one way or another. In fact, I think development trends uh, may end up kind of limiting this uh, down to a low percentage possibility, and that's mainly because of the fact that we just don't really have the uh, environment, especially across the northern part of this area, to kind of work with. Uh, and we can tell here on the visible satellite imagery, our satellite imagery is running a little bit behind this afternoon, uh, but from earlier this morning, before just uh, before 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, we could tell that we did have somewhat of a curved uh, banding. This is actually not necessarily a curved band like that. Uh, it is, in fact, just because of these easterly trade winds that are going out across here. You've got strong trade winds here, and that's kind of forcing all of this convection to kind of be pushed this way. Uh, but that is not really a curved band associated with any area of low pressure. We can kind of see that we have uh, actually southerly winds here on the, uh, on the south side of this, which means if we don't have westernlies here, we don't have a closed circulation. This is not a tropical cyclone at the moment. But if we can get enough persistent convection, we may be able to actually lower the pressures in here as a positive feedback loop occurs. And we may be able to get westerly winds here, but it's going to be really hard as it approaches the Western Antilles because the trade winds will be increasing. And that is going to prevent uh, the storm from really getting these westerly winds here on the southern side as it goes uh, basically across the opposing flow. So it's going to be really hard to kind of do that. And as for our newly designated Invest Area 97L, this one will have the better shot at development over the next couple of days. Once again, threatening the Lesser Antilles. This one will be coming off. This one is off at a lower latitude. And this could actually impact parts of uh, really uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, uh, those areas, and then make its way into the Caribbean over the next couple of days, one of these low rider type systems. And that's going to be the key uh, if this wants to actually survive uh, the trade winds of the Caribbean and really the hostile conditions that are to the north here. If this can make it and survive at a low latitude, we may be able to actually, in fact, get a storm to develop in this region. And if we look here at the visible satellite imagery, we'll notice that we already have a well-defined area of lower pressures down here. It is elongated this afternoon and the recent uh, scatterometer pass uh, from about uh, about really 7.20 in the morning, uh, indicated that we maybe actually do, in fact, have an area of low pressure that has already developed across. So you can kind of see we have 
some of these westerly winds here, and then we have, again, kind of the, the opposing flow here, we may, in fact, have a, a closed circulation in this area, albeit it is certainly elongated. You can kind of see that it is not uh, certainly broad. It is not a nice little uh, concentrated area. It is rather broad, and that means that we could, in fact, even have more than one uh, low-level center uh, but we can tell here on the visible satellite imagery again from earlier this morning uh, that we already did have substantial deep convection around it. And that has continued to persist e even into this afternoon. Uh, checking back on the latest satellite images uh, on the other monitor here, we can see that the storm actually does have an elongated area of low pressure and sufficient convection that is around it right now, which could help to further lower the pressures. And I do think this will be the one to monitor over the next couple of days as development uh, trends have recently indicated that this could become a tropical storm as early as tomorrow morning. Now, if we look here on the 850 vorticity product, this has been in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what we'll notice here, again, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. This is the remnants here of tropical storm Danny and the uh, remnants here of what was, was a hurricane in the eastern Pacific. And again, here is invest area 95L right there. Again, it does have that area of spin. It's not really deep, and it's not really that strong. But it does have a little bit of bundling here in the atmosphere, and that may help to contribute a little bit to potentially closing off the circulation as it moves off towards the west-northwest over the, the next couple of days. And then down here at the low latitudes, this is south of 10 degrees north latitude here, we have invest area 97L. Again, it is certainly elongated this morning, but does have an area of sufficient deep convection with it. And certainly if we get enough of that convection, again, we kind of get that positive feedback loop and we may be in fact able to develop a closed low level uh, circulation uh, over the next really uh, 12 to 24 hours. And that's going to be very, very crucial because the model forecasts, especially on the GFS, have certainly indicated that we are going to be getting closer to that potential for a closed circulation to end up developing within the next 12 to 24 hours or so. Now, one thing that 97L has going for it here, and both of these waves now have going for it, this is the upper ocean heat content map valid as of this morning. And again, these uh, lighter blue shades here and onwards towards the right of the scale, this is your higher upper ocean heat content. Tropical cyclones love to upwell cooler water. And if you have sufficient upper ocean heat content, which is what the warmer colors towards the right of the scale represent, it only upwells the warmer water. And in fact, we can see here where our Tropical systems both are, this is about 10 degrees north latitude, right about here. And what we'll notice is that, uh, especially for 97L, our system is sitting in, in these warmer waters here of the uh, kind of the south central Atlantic. And this will be moving into a pocket of higher upper ocean heat content over the next couple of days. And the same for invest area 95L, although right now it is sitting roughly at about here and we'll be traversing this area over the next couple of days. So we'll, we'll be watching, but 95L certainly has uh, less upper ocean heat content to work with, whereas 97L right here has more upper ocean heat content to work with, more warmer waters that are uh, deeper and more warm, and that could definitely create some, some issues down there as the system tries to end up developing. And then certainly we notice that we have some very warm waters here in the Caribbean and even here in the Gulf Stream, in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're getting to that time where the, now there's actually something that we have to watch out there and certainly something that's going to be kind of worth mentioning over the next couple of days with both of these systems. So we'll take a look here at the model forecast. This is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Here is invest area 95L and here is invest area 97L. Uh, right now, and we'll start to take a look at the steering flow because this is what now really matters right now. Uh, first of all, we have a big ridge of high pressure sitting off the Carolina coastline here, part of this Bermuda, Bermuda Azores High, but it is displaced really far to the south. We can kind of see that the horizontal axis is kind of elongated down like that. That's our horizontal axis of the Bermuda Azores High. And what this is doing is not only is it increasing a fair bit amount of trades across the northern part here of the Cari uh, really the northern part of the main development region into the Caribbean, but this also keeps the, these tropical waves fairly suppressed at a low latitude here, and that's why we're not seeing these systems you know just rapidly gain latitude like that 
you know, do something like that where these systems gain latitude. That's not happening. And over the next couple of days here, this is the 850 vorticity, by the way. We notice that the GFS already spins up a system by tomorrow afternoon, really tomorrow morning. We have a tropical depression or storm here uh, that is formed from Invest Area 97L. We also notice that we have this ridge now sliding towards the south and east here. Here's also Invest Area 95L. So let's take a look here at the environment around our systems. And what we'll notice here for 95L is that we have a, a semi-decent environment, but we start to increase shear and especially these trade winds start to really increase. That's about the 15 to 20 knots of shear uh, speed shear that is from these trade winds that are going to be ripping across the tropical Atlantic and into the Caribbean. And those are one of the things that could prevent significant organization as if you have strong trade winds blowing from the east and you need westerly winds on the south side to close off a circulation, because it's going against the flow, you get any westerly that's going against the flow, it's not going to be able to completely close off a circulation. And this may just be an open wave within the next 24 hours as it approaches the Western Antilles. And that's why I think development chances will actually be a little bit less as it nears this area. Now, like I said, we do have a semi-favorable environment with some uh, decent relative humidity, although we do have some dry uh, mid-level air, not really substantially dry mid-level air, but there is enough dry mid-level air that could work its way down to the surface and actually end up uh, really cause some sinking air in the atmosphere to occur. And that's going to be one of the problems that I think we're going to be running into is this mid-level dry air and strong trade winds coming out of the east preventing those westerly winds on the southern side of any circulation that attempts to get going. And I think that's going to be one of the reasons why we end up kind of losing development chances and then development chances, uh, even further from there, again, we continue to increase these trade winds. Here's our next system out here, but our trade winds will really be ripping at this time, and development chances just don't really have a, a really good shot there. If you look here at the relative humidity in the middle part of the atmosphere, in the 700 to 400 millibar layer, what we'll notice is that Invest Area 95L is currently sitting within a relatively moist pocket right now, which is why we have some su substantial convection with it. But we noticed that, th that this tropical, um, really this tropical easterly jet here, this African easterly jet, is going to be really ripping across this area and increasing. Uh, some of these flags here indicate about the 20 knots of trade uh, winds across this region. And that's going to be one of the problems as 95L tries to gain a little bit of latitude here. And what we'll notice here is that a lot of this dry Saharan air actually increases around our system. And you can see here, Invest Area 97L. Now, 97L actually does have a little bit of a, a more favorable environment. We can kind of take a look at that here. That 97L has a moist environment, not a lot of shear, only about six knots. And most of that here is in the upper levels of the atmosphere, in the mid to upper levels, after about 500 millibars, so after about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere, we start to get the really the big increase in, in the trades across here. But beyond that, uh, really, 97L has the most favorable environment that I've actually seen out of the southern main development region, and that continues to actually uh, continues uh, to have a very favorable environment in 97L actually has a favorable environment. Now this approaches the Lesser Antilles here uh, within the next about 84 hours here by late Friday night going into Saturday morning. And this is where it could be a, a little bit more of a struggle. Now we do have a tropical storm here on the model, but what we'll notice is that we really start to increase these trade winds. We get these surface winds here at about 15 to 20 knots and they increase to about 35 uh, really about you know 25 to 30 knots there uh, just above the surface. And what that's going to do, again, it's going to create a really hellhole environment for a storm to actually end up developing. And you really just aren't going to be able uh, to get this to develop into a very deep system that is going to be substantial in any way. However, if we can't get a system that is going to end up developing across here, we may actually end up kind of creating an environment where 97L may be able to actually end up, you know, kind of making its own little environment and protecting itself. And then as we go through the next couple of days, this tries to maintain itself in the Caribbean uh, as it nears kind of uh, near the Dominican Republic.
But again, we're going to get this very strong trade surge, very strong dry air surge across this region. So I do think that whatever enters the Caribbean will potentially have a harder time developing in that vicinity. The European run from 0Z, again, didn't really show much. It was very unenthusiastic, but it does amplify this wave here by hour 72. And by hour 96, this is by 0Z Saturday, or really about 8 p.m. on Friday evening. This is now uh, past the lesser until so a little bit of timing difference here. But we notice that this big high pressure sitting off here uh, is going to really force anything into the Caribbean and keep it at a fairly low latitude for quite some time. The 60 European ensembles, however, were a little bit more enthusiastic if we kind of run them out here. This is Invest Area 95L. This is 97L. And we have a more tight clustering here on 97L uh, coming out of the deep tropics here. And this is why I think development chances will actually kind of increase here over the next couple of days. And we can actually see that within the matter here of about 96 hours, about 90 to 96 hours here, we end up having a storm somewhere near the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of days. So we could be looking at a couple of more tropical systems that end up developing. Also, you notice that 95L doesn't really have much model support uh, after about uh, the next 84 hours. So it does look like that 94L will probably be the one that will be suffering here. And we may see development chances really begin to increase here on Invest Area 97L, which could become Tropical Storm Elsa. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.